Hello comic book fans, today I'm just going to talk about the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. I just picked this up today, I know it's an older crossover event series. It was released in from December 2015 to May 2016, and it was a six issue run. This is still widely available, I just picked this up today, today read through it, loved it. Uh, they did just release a trade paperback version. Of course, I like the, prefer the hardcover editions, and this is uh, again you can see it's a nice quality book, no dust jacket on it, in good quality paper in it. And the reason I wanted to talk about this, despite it being an older run and there's a lot of other videos already, is just I was really excited about it. And this is just really one of those special kind of things that can only happen in comic books. These crossover events, I mean. They've been doing them for decades. I remember the old ones I have reading like Robocop Terminator, Aliens Predator of course, and things like uh, Predator Batman, of course some of the Marvel DC crossovers like uh, Batman Spider-Man and then they did a Marvel vs DC crossover that was a lot of fun. And again, like these are, this is just the kind of stuff that can only happen in comic books. You'd probably never, ever, ever see this in any form of film. And it's a lot of fun. And this, uh, this series is just a complete blast. So Krang has sent, has gotten rid of the Turtles and Shredder and a bunch of members of the Foot Clan and sent them to Gotham City through a teleporter. And... They're all trying to get back home. So the Shredder and the Foot Clan are kidnapping scientists and stealing lab components to build another transporter to get back to New York City. And the Turtles are trying to, of course, trying to stop them and get back home. Batman, of course, thinks that the Turtles are involved in it at first, and they have a nice, fun, quick little boat here. really fun moments and then uh, of course with the shredder stealing components and debuilding this dimension it gets the word out in Gotham and it attracts the attention of Ra's al Ghul and the League of Shadows eventually Sh shredder and Ra's al Ghul form an alliance with a plan of using the teleporter and the power of their two Clans, the Foot Clan and the League of Shadows to take over Gotham and New York City. And then of course the Batman and the Ninja Turtles team up to stop them. And I'll just give away one kind of minor, I guess, well, I have a, a spoiler I guess. If you don't want to hear it, just stop in this video because this is really worth picking up, you should. Anyways, at the end, the Shredder gets a bunch of the mutagen from his dimension, and he uses it to transform a bunch of prisoners in Ar Arkham Asylum into uh, animals, kind of like what they did with Bebop and Rocksteady. So you get a bunch of classic Gotham villains, or Batman villains, into like these giant mutant animals. It's so awesome. It's such a perfect way to end this crossover. I mean, there you can see the penguin. He's actually is a penguin now. And there they all are. You got Bane as this elephant. Joker as like a cobra. Uh, Harley Quinn, she's a like a panther or something. You got a polar bear for Mr. Freeze. Poison Ivy is a praying mantis. And so on. It's just, I couldn't think of a more perfect way to end a crossover between Batman and the Ninja Turtles and of course it ends with just an epic fight between the Shredder and Batman and there's a lot of really fun moments and in interactions most notably I'll mention my favorite one was probably when you see Leonardo and Batman sparring for fun teaching each other things they've learned and Master Splinter is over watching them and he's laying out uh, instructions and you think he's talking to Leonardo but then after Leonardo beats Batman 
or takes him down, it's you, you realize that Splinter was actually schooling Batman. So that was a really cool, fun little twist that he was actually teaching Batman something. Kind of shows Splinter's wisdom. And then, yeah, now that the... And that's basically it. And at the end, you got a bunch of covers. And there's a lot of variant covers. So there's the main cover of issue one. And this is one of the vi variants, which is really cool. I love these, and there's one for every issue. It's the from the original creator of Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman. And so he does one for every issue. I just love that. And then I love these black and white ones with where the bandana is. And then the bat symbol has some light blue on it there, dark blue. So that's... There's one of those for like every issue too. And they explain where all the covers came from as well. Which is always nice and fun. There's some really good artwork within here. Lots of different styles. Again, there's that Kevin Eastman original style artwork. Now I've read the original, very original Ninja Turtles. I haven't read any of the newer stuff. I don't know if it's any good. Maybe if it is, you can recommend it in the comments section. But my first exposure to Ninja Turtles was, of course, the 80s cartoon. I remember going as a kid to a comic book store and seeing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics and getting all excited and then looking at them and going, well, this isn't Ninja Turtles, this is weird. Like, I remember, well, why are the comics all in black and white? That's just kind of dumb, thinking that as a kid. And then I was like, why are all their, and like you see the covers, like, why are they all, all their bandanas red? Donatello's not supposed to have a red bandana, it's supposed to be purple and so on. Of course now, as I've gotten older, I just absolutely love those original comic books. They're a lot more serious and violent than the what the Ninja Turtles are nowadays. If you haven't read those, I highly recommend it. There's a really badass image right there. If you haven't read those, I highly recommend it. You can get them in nice hardcover collections now. And you can either get them in the original black and white, and if for some reason you don't like black and white, they did release them in a special colored edition. So if that's something that appeals to you, then there's you can get that. And Either way, just read those original Ninja Turtle comics. They're really, really cool. And I highly recommend picking this book up. This was just one of those... Again, one of those special things that can only happen is in comics. It was really well done. The artwork is fantastic. The story is great. They really capture the traits and how the, the interactions between the Turtles and Batman and Robin and Alfred are just perfect. And, how, and the, of course, the epic battle between Batman and the Shredder at the end is awesome. So I highly recommend this. This is just a ton of fun to read. It's still widely available. So if, you, if this is something on the fence, you weren't sure if you wanted to pick it up or not, or if you didn't even know about it, you definitely go out and pick this up. This is just a ton of fun. So that's it. Thanks for watching my video, everyone.